So as you have seen the thumbnail, I had a unplanned home birth. I was totally shocked myself when it all happened, but this is how it went down. So the night before, around 12 a.m., I felt something, like I kind of felt like period pain, but I was so tired, I went to sleep. Come 5 a.m., I'm feeling the cramps. It's like period pain. I was like, okay, today's the day. So I went downstairs, went on the computer, I tied loose ends, put my out of office reply. I also did a load of washing because there was like a basket. So I was like, no, quickly do it. I had breakfast, hung the laundry. Then they, they felt kind of mild, you know, like I was just breathing, I was relaxing. I was packing my hospital bag at around 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Come 8 a.m., this is kind of like when you have to stop and just go, whew. Okay, that's a contraction, you know. Okay, back to what I was doing. What was I doing? Packing my bag, cleaning my room, nesting, cleaning the nursery. So at around 8.30, we called the hospital and just to kind of let them know that contractions were happening. So at around nine o'clock, I moved into the bedroom. I had to lie down. This was when it was like, oof, oof. Um, had a bottle of water. I had like a packet of lollies and a stress ball. And so I said goodbye to my husband. I screamed it out till like 10 a.m. When he came back at around 10 a.m., 10.30, he was massaging me in our bedroom. But then I think they got to a point where he just, he couldn't handle the bouncing of the sound here. And so he wanted to step out into the next room and write down the contractions. The reason why we had to write down the contractions was number one for the hospital, but number two, we did storing of the umbilical cord blood, stem cell blood. But yeah, come 10.30, 11 a.m., like it's getting intense. I'm actually starting to raise my voice. I'm really squeezing the stress ball and I got my TENS machine and I put it on my like lower pelvis area to I guess soothe. I don't know. I don't know what it does. And I guess it just helped when the contractions came around. The contractions were coming around quite fast at 11.30 and around this time like I was really screaming. I sounded like an animal at this point. Then when we hit midday I felt something. I was screaming like really really loud and I kind of felt this like urge to kind of I can't, I can't explain it and then I felt this burst of like Psh! but I was lying down so I was like oh my gosh my god help me help me and so I went to the bathroom and then I checked because I was wearing like a very quick pad I looked down and I was like oh like a bit of water I was like I thought it was nothing so I just changed myself I refreshed I went back into the bed and went back to screaming moaning I was just intense pain so that was going down but during this time between 12 p.m to 12 30 p.m i was pushing now looking back i know that i was pushing but back then i just thought i was doing a poo when i was doing all of my research all i was told was it feels like you're doing a poo so prior to that i looked into the toilet bowl when my water broke and i did see a little bit of Poo. When I was in the bed, I was pushing and I was like, hurry up, Mishi, like push out that poo so we can go to the hospital so I don't make a mess and I don't embarrass myself. So I'm pushing really, really, really hard at this point. I'm like screeching, seriously. It's just me in the master bedroom. I'm just in my bed. I'm curled up like this, like fetal position, screaming on my soft pillow with my, with my, like my stress ball. I was in the zone. You know, like, I just like can't think of anything else. I was sleeping in between contractions and my contractions were like a minute apart. Seriously, I was sleeping. I would close my eyes and I'd swear I'd, I'd have a dream or I'd be in deep sleep and then <gasps> they'd come again. I'm like, <sighs> They got to a point at around like 12.30, like I was screaming and I said, call the hospital, call the hospital, tell them that we're going there right now. Just because prior to that, when we called at around 10.30, they were kind of like pushing back and they were like, oh no, you're fine, you know, stay at home, relax. So at 12.30, I was like, call them, we're coming in right now, they better not refuse us. You know, we're going. But I was literally screaming the house down. I swear my neighbors could hear it. So I went to the bathroom. I okay, get this. I started pushing hardcore and I was like, hurry up, poo, get out. And I could feel, now that I look back, it was the ring of fire. It was this burn. It was like this tear. I was like, ah, freaking, oh my God. And the, the sound bouncing in the bathroom tiles was even louder. And I don't care, I was, oh. And obviously I can see some blood dripping in the toilet bowl. I was like, ah, oh God, what the hell is going on? Again, I don't know what's going on. I just, I don't know what the blood meant. So again, I changed, I refreshed. But again, remember they were coming every minute. So every second I'm just like, wait, just wait. Okay, I'm okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, wait. <sighs> okay, I'm fine. 
And so we're like, okay, let's go down the stairs. My bag is packed, the car is ready to go. It's literally the engine's on, it's outside. And we're going down the stairs. I can barely walk. I don't know what's going on. I felt like this cripple. I was just like, okay, two handlebars on the wall. And then we get to kind of like the corner. And like, my husband's like, no, 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 let me get in front of you. Cause it looked like I was about to fall down. We walk, well, we take like two steps. And then I was like, I feel something over, I feel something, stop, stop, stop. I feel there's something, there's something. I was wearing a dress. He looks underneath my dress <sighs> and I could see his eyes. Sit down, Michelle, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Like his eyes were like this large. His, the voice it was just so panicky. I was like, uh, to me, I was like, can I just sit down on the couch downstairs? At least that's soft, but he was like, no, sit down, sit down. He tells me now that when he was looking down in between, he could see our baby's head. My baby had a lot of hair when she was born and he saw... Duh! So he tells me to sit down. We call the hospital. So we're on the phone of the hospital and I can't remember. All of a sudden, I'm like, off, 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 something's happening. It's another contraction. Something is coming out. I was like, it feels warm and it feels... And then... She just came out. It just kind of felt like an octopus or like, you know that scene from Men in Black when the alien, when he delivers the alien baby. And so when I was pushing, I was like, babe, 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 something's happening. And obviously I'm laying back and like on the stairs and I'm like this. And his hands are like that. And like he, he delivers our baby girl with his bare hands. He, he catches her, like he catches, like he, she was so fast, like she just like, like, honestly, we don't even remember. It was like, it was like I entered this black hole, this vortex. I just don't remember. I just remember the phone call and all of a sudden I just remember like holding her. And I was like, oh my gosh. He catches her and then he's kind of like, oh my gosh. Like, cause, cause she was like upside down and the umbilical cord is like attached to me. So he was kind of like tangled and then he kind of puts her upright and then gives her to me and I'm like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I only know what I see in the video, so I kind of lift my top up to do skin to skin. And I was like, oh my God, wipe her down, wipe her down, get, get the tea towel. Dude, he runs downstairs, get the tea towel from the kitchen. Like we're like unprepared. I used kitchen towel, oh my gosh. And we're just like wiping, you know, like that white stuff. And she was like pink and purple and blue and like it's so raw, you know, like a baby out of the womb is so raw. Oh my gosh, anyway, she's, she's placed on me and obviously we're panicking and we're just wiping her down and guess what? The hospital's still on the line. Like, she was like, is everything okay? And we were like, we just delivered the baby. We hung up, we had to call the ambulance, the paramedics came. While we were waiting, they took 10 minutes, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord, oh my gosh. My baby didn't cry. And in fact, we, we just wanted to make sure she was alive. She was so quiet, so peaceful when she looked up at me and I looked at her and I saw her little hands on my chest and she was so beautiful. Um, she was so little. She had this big, bright, like, you know, black blue eyes and it was just so peaceful. She sneezed. So that's when we knew she was alive because she didn't make a sound. Other than the sneeze, that's it. She was so quiet. We didn't move. I couldn't move. I was like torn apart at that point. I was very sore down there. The umbilical cord is still attached and we're awkwardly on the stairs lying down. The ambulance came and they were very helpful. They sent like a squad, a whole team, because if you do give birth, that's two patients. So you you pretty much get all the experts. And yeah, someone helped me out and they gave me some oxytocin so that I was able to birth the placenta. And we told them to save the placenta because we needed it for stem cell storage. They put it in a plastic bag. My husband cut the umbilical cord. I couldn't even get dressed. They were just like, get up, like get in the stretcher, we've got to go. And when I stood up, I just had like a sports bra. I had to put on a new like nappy, like adult nappy. And I looked like I just murdered someone. There was like dry blood all over me. The staircase at home. Oh my God, thank God my landlord can't hear this. There was like blood everywhere. There was water everywhere. There was like a volunteer or an intern on the paramedics team. I think she had to go outside and vomit or something. She just couldn't handle that much blood. <laughs> Anyway, so it was like a quick ride to the hospital. Funny enough, I live like five minutes from the hospital and this happens. And so went to the hospital, they took care of me and I have another video about my hospital experience if you wanna hear about that. I can't believe it, like when I was on the stairs, 
sitting there. Norville was on the phone because he was on the phone to the ambulance, but he stayed with me. I was just sat there and I said, oh my gosh, I did this all by myself. I am so proud of myself. No epidural, no midwife, no doctor, no nothing. Like I was screaming for hours and hours and hours in my bedroom. No advice, no coach, no consultant, no professional, just, just peace. I'm so proud of myself. I'm proud of you, mama. Whether you're watching this before or after giving birth, honestly, it's amazing what our bodies can do. You know, beforehand, I was like, I want epidural. And when I first got pregnant, I was like, I want a C-section. I want to know the date, the time. I want to know everything. I want just, I don't like uncertainty. You know, I'm like, I'm a wuss. I'm a coward. Like, I need pain medication. I need this. But you know what? I am all for the natural birth i'm all for the home birth i'm all for the group community the women around you kind of scene i just i think it's so positive thank you so much for watching you are so brave you are so beautiful your body is capable i believe in you if you want to know what contractions are like during labor without epidural click this video here i have so much more videos on labor delivery pregnancy and everything i'd love for you to binge watch it just click the playlist thanks again i'll see you on the next video Bye.